Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be having a look at early Star Wars fan club magazines as well as some of the like convention booklets and things like that that I think you're going to find really interesting. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay then, so uh, today we're going to be having a look at a lot of fan club magazines. Um, but the first thing I found, which actually was after the fan club mags, was this. So uh, back in uh, November the 13th, 1994, um, there was a Star Wars day at Elstree Studios. And this was the sort of the souvenir booklet uh, from it. And I thought it might make quite interesting viewing. Um, so let's have a little look through this. So I don't know how many people went. Perhaps there was a thousand people went maybe more I don't really know I can't remember now it was um it was after all 26 years ago but it pushes the then the UK Star Wars fan club then a little bit of history about Elstree there these are some of the guests that were there um there's Kenny Baker. I guess, uh, you know, you got them signed by the guests who were there. So Kenny Baker and uh, Mike Edmonds as Log Ray. Jeremy Bullock, this is like a little insert actually. So Jeremy Bullock must have been a late, a late addition to the show. This is to join Aliens telephone cards. Hmm. Star Wars telephone cards. <laughs> What's this? Elstree Day 2. I don't remember there being a Day 2. Uh, Brian Johnson. I don't remember seeing him there. Um, Dave Prowse, of course. Well, back then he never missed at any event. Um, he would turn up and be uh, selling his autograph. Warwick Davis couldn't make it. However, I do believe he, this was the first time I saw um, that little video that he made, um, which is on YouTube now, sort of behind the scenes of Return of the Jedi, which is really good. He, uh, he left them a copy of that to be shown. That's the first time I saw that. There we are, what's this? Dark Times, new retro fanzine. Anyway, that was uh, that was the Star Wars L Street Day. The the big memory, apart from meeting the stars, of course, was that um, there were dealers galore, and there was so much vintage toy goodness there, you just wouldn't believe it. It was just phenomenal. Now, on to the fan club stuff. So, this may not strictly be in order, but I seem to remember joining the fan club just before Empire Strikes Back came out. Um, so that would have been sort of late. 79 I reckon I joined the fan club I can't really remember where I saw the address but this was one of the um one of the sort of joining packs that I remember getting so it's a little empire patch there it's got some membership cards and things that's quite nice that's um that was for uh the ticket for Return of the Jedi look, 1st of June 1983 that would have been in the Leicester Square Theatre in London. And um, I really used to like the Star Wars fan club. Uh, I really did. So they did all sorts of these stickers and things like that. Some of which I've got in other bits of my collection. Um, that was what was in the kit, by the look of it. Got some stills here. And Lucasfilm tended to look after the... Uh, the Star Wars fans quite well, I believe, you know. So what's this? Uh, this is uh, official merchandise sheets for 1984. So this might be a little bit later, but I'm sure I joined about 80, about 1980, in fact. There's loads of it, isn't there? Jedi on video. Listing about the tracks. Dear Star Wars fan, thank you for your interest in the Star Wars saga and welcome to the club. Well, thank you. Got 
letter from Maureen Garrett. And although it was Star Wars, they did include all the Indiana Jones stuff as well. Loads to go through, isn't there? Star Wars triple bill. Oh, there's stacks of it. I try and keep it all sort of vaguely in order. But I do remember every Star Wars fan club member who was registered at the time of Return of the Jedi, their names were put onto a little piece of microfilm which was buried in like a, um, a time capsule outside um, Lucasfilm headquarters in Marion County. So um, I would imagine that my name is there somewhere on that microsheaf <laughs> from back in 1980 or whenever they did it. Anyway, that was sort of, I believe, like the welcoming folder for when you first joined the fan club. Although it does appear to be the slightly sort of later one which has got Return of the Jedi stuff in as well as uh, Empire Strikes Back and that. So, but still nice all the same and nice to have all the, all the tickets and things like that in that little folder. And the main publication for the fan club mag, obviously this is before the Star Wars Insider ever got published, um, was this thing called Bantha Tracks. Now, I don't know if I've got them all, but I've certainly got most of them. Now, the very early ones, are su they're literally just a, a, a couple of pages. That's lit literally it. And as time went on, and the club got more established, um, they released more and more extravagant ones. They're not even numbered at the moment. And I'm sure these are my original ones, because an interview with Irvin Kirshner, obviously the director of um, Empire Strikes Back. And I believe these are the very earliest ones that I got. Oh, and this one is actually dated volume number one, but it's number five. It's just summer 1979. I reckon that's when I first got these. What was always amazing was some of the merchandise that you saw on the back. So here's an example of it. You can get all the one sheets direct. Um, we've seen that top. If you remember, we've seen that in one of my previous videos. I've certainly got the album later on and these patches. So yeah, this one is number 19. This is Jedi now. So they're a bit more advanced by now in their content. I'm not sure if these are actually in order. Yep, number 20. And they all have a similar sort of format. Often have an interview with someone. Obviously the cool fan club memorabilia as well. And that was a, sometimes the only way you could get some of this stuff was through, through the Star Wars fan club. Number 22 here. I don't think these are very expensive to pick up. You could probably get a big load of them for like 20, 20 quid or something like that, because they're not massively collectible, but they are very much a part of the Star Wars story. And uh, I think um, they're, they're absolutely great and certainly very nostalgic for me. When a new issue would come in, you'd because there wasn't a lot to it, you could go through it time and time again and read it, read it and reread it. It's number 24 here. And later on, they don't just, cover Star Wars. They do cover later Lucasfilm endeavors. This is looking at the Ewok, Ewok movie. So I guess we ought to hurriedly go through, rush past that one. <laughs> 26. This is the World Con. Where Star Wars won a few awards, I no doubt. Nineteen eighty-four. This is still. Number 27. So the looking at effects again. This one's more in the style of a poster magazine. Which it is, yeah. This 
what's this? Another one, 28. So also part two, looking at the special effects team. So again, it seems to have reverted to a poster magazine and not quite as extensive because I guess they'd run out of Star Wars films to cover. So they had to look at other things now, it, such as the Ewoks and Droids. So we're looking at 1985. Look at this advert on the back here. So it's special collector's items. So you could get some one sheets, poster albums, back issues of the newsletter. But basically, there's only 12 pages there. So it looks as if by now the magazine is already struggling a little bit because of the lack of new content. I just got a couple more. So this, that was number 29. This is number 30, looking at Labyrinth, which was, of course, another team up between George Lucas, Jim Henson, and um, David Bowie there. David Bowie. Howard the Duck, another Lucasfilm endeavor. A huge flop. And the last Bantha tracks I've got is this one, which is winter 1986. This must have been one of the tail end ones before it got cancelled. I don't. And then I think it got revived very near the end uh, of either the late 80s or the early 90s when Star Wars Insider came along. Um, this was the Empire one. This is another fan club mag. And this was... Uh, a nice Empire, really nice quality actually, Empire poster mag looking at the different characters. So that's, that's really nice that one actually for Empire Strikes Back. And the last little thing I've got is in this bag here. I'm not hundred percent sure even what it is, but let's, let's have a look. So this looks like fan club stickers. Yeah, look, the official Lucasfilm Star Wars fan club. 1985, so it's like a plastic thing. What are these? Ah, these are much more modern. These are uh, for the second trilogy, so nothing too special there. And that's a that's a ticket for Phantom Menace, no doubt. So anyway, there we go. So a little look at those um, fan club mags. And I do think they are of historical importance, particularly if you, uh, you had these growing up back in the day. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this look at these vintage Star Wars fan club magazines. There's certainly a lot of interesting stuff in there, wasn't there? So if you have enjoyed the video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do consider subscribing for regular vintage Star Wars content. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.